Next up, we have D-Lo. Y'all know about D-Lo? Who knows about D-Lo? All right, show some love. Show some love. D-Lo is a queer, transgender, Tamil Sri Lankan actor, writer, comedian. He is also the co-producer for Disoriented Comedy. His solo shows, Ramblations and Defunct and De Facto Life have toured internationally. His TV film credits include co-starring Looking, Transparent, and Sense8. This year, he will be featured in Sundance Fellow Adelina Antony's feature-length film, Bruising for Bezos, in the supporting lead role of Ronnie. Please put your hands together for D-Lo. like uh, Hilton lotion uh, yeah so uh, so how is everyone good good uh, I didn't know the lights were going to be on so uh, I want to tell you this is a little story about uh, my um, my child Dilo and uh, their journey uh, I usually don't come to speak with him anymore because uh, I am retired uh, but you know as they say in the art world anything for Roberta so um, <laughs> In 1999 is when Dilo uh, told me that she, wa she, he, she was a gay. Uh, then uh, she also said, um, I'm feeling like a little boy trapped in a woman's body. And, you know, for me, you know, this is all strange, you know. We don't have the gays in Sri Lanka, no? So, um, so and, and, you know, there, there we don't have it. So here I have to look who, is the gay, who are the gays, you know. And I saw uh, Ellen DeGeneres and uh, Rosie O'Donnell. And remember that old tennis player, Martina Nevert? Ne uh, Martina Nevert. <laughs> Martina Nevert Balachandran. So <laughs> you see that all these are, you know, the white people. And um, my Dilo is not even fair skinned. So I didn't know what was going on. So um, at first, you know, I thought it was my fault, um, but I, I realized, you know, now, you know, it couldn't be my fault because it is evident that it is her father's fault. And <laughs> yeah, no, truly, huh? they used to, you know, throw the ball, playing catch, go mow the lawn, go to home or depot, you know, all these things. <laughs> I, I think that uh, her father wanted a son so bad, he turned her into one, you know. So I uh, had a shock, you know, when Dilo told me that uh, she, uh, he, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, is a gay or a trans. Because, you know, these people, they get killed. And already in Lancaster, you know, California, it's gay, gay, gay. So I think, you know, why you want to leave Sri Lanka, vote on country and come here and get killed? So <laughs> anyway, so then um, I also was thinking, you know, um, you know, I, I did some work on myself and I, uh, started to think, you know, maybe uh, I am so hard on Dilo because, you know, um, my my first daughter, uh, Krishani, uh, she passed away a long time ago, and it was a plane crash. And uh, but anyway, uh, Dilo is not dead, and so I am going to bring Dilo now, right now, for you all to uh, talk to Dilo. And uh, you all smell very, very nice. And um, I, I feel very happy to be here, but I'm also feeling very happy that I'm leaving. <laughs> so everybody's talking about their cop stories, so I thought I might add to the mix. And, um, and so one of the few times I was pulled over for driving while black was actually not when I was driving, but when I was bicycling at night in Santa Monica, California. Okay, and you know Santa Monica, you know what I'm saying? Lit ass beach city, right? So I'm riding on my bike and I see them in the oncoming traffic and I was like, oh shit, wait, I'm in Santa Monica. <laughs> so I see them pass me by and out the corner of my eye, I see them screech a U turn and I'm like, shit. Oop, oop. Get off your bike, sir. So I did what any man of color would do in this moment in time. I pretended to be a white woman. I was like, what happened, officer? 
Oh, yeah, I'm just coming back from my cardio pole dancing class. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could totally check my bag. Yeah, they're just tampons with loofah. So, um, Ossifer, um, why'd you pull me over? And he told me it's because I didn't have a bike light in lit-ass Santa Monica, you know what I'm saying? So I'm praying to my Hindu gods, praying that nothing bad happens, and none of them 10,000 motherfuckers answer me. But Jesus, God, you know, the white one answered me. He had me on call waiting or some shit. And he sends a white dude on his bike rolling right past us, coincidentally looking like Jesus. So, <laughs> okay? so I'm trying to get the officer's attention, and he's not paying me mine. So I do my citizenly duty, and I was like, stop. <laughs> stop. You are supposed to have a bike light. It's the law. Right, officer? <laughs> to which Jesus responds, dude, I totally didn't know I had to have a bike light. <laughs> like, who knows those things? <laughs> and in a very un-Romanesque fashion, the cops let Jesus go. And I was stuck on the sidewalk. Nothing bad happened that time. Now, you just see my mom, and I'm going to tell you, at some point in my history, I was driving to her house, and this is probably, I don't know, a couple of months since I had seen her last, and I wasn't really on good talking terms with her. And I had to tell her two important things, that I had a girlfriend and that I had top surgery. Top surgery, for all of you who don't know, is a double mastectomy. Um, and I was scared because the last time I told her that I had a girlfriend, she stopped talking to me. Apparently, I could be a queer, just not a functioning one. So I open her, the door to her house. I get to the kitchen, and she's cooking tofu. And I was like, Amma, I have to tell you two really important things, and you're not going to like it. In fact, you're going to get nutty, and you're going to go crazy. And she's like, then don't tell me. <laughs> I was like, Amma, I have to. I have to get this off my chest. <laughs> so so then, so she was like, I already know. I'm like, Amma, what do you know? I know that you have a girlfriend now. I do. Are you okay by that? Amma, but I have to tell you this really other, like this whole other thing, and this is the one you're really not going to like. And I already know. I'm like, Amma, you don't know this one, trust me. No, I know you're going to plan to some, have some surgery. Um, kind of, Amma, uh, I already had the surgery. What? You already? Who was with you? Uh, it was Amma, uh, it was Nushi and Thambi, they were with me. Amma, are you okay? Yeah. Are you going to take the injections? Don't take the injections. It's not safe. Amma, it's safe for the most part. Let's talk about that later. Amma, are you okay, really? Yeah. But then I got scared because I thought, this is the calm before the storm, and pretty soon there's going to be tofu flying over the fucking kitchen. So I came around to her and I said, Amma, are you sure you're okay? I need ginger. Okay, you need ginger. Fine, let's go to Trader Joe's and we'll get you ginger. And uh, you're running low on your hot cocoa and she's a fiend. So we had to go. And so we get in the car and I'm like tripped out because she's not talking. She's just looking out the window. I'm like, why isn't she going ballistic? This is weird. I, and I didn't get it. We get to the parking lot, go inside Trader Joe. And then we get the ginger, but we can't find the hot cocoa. So I'm like, fuck. Um, I'm going to go up to the clerk guy and... Um, Ask him where the hot cocoa is, and I'll look in the back, okay? You know the clerk? You know, uh, Trader Joe? Go ask him. And so, meanwhile, she's up there. I find it on the far corner, far wall, and I'm looking up and down the aisles, and I'm like, oh, shit. Where's Amma? I can't find her. I can't find her. I'm like, she's going to be crumpled in a heap, crying. And then I find her, and she is near the hot cocoa with Trader Joe, and I say, Amma, look, look. I got you your hot cocoa. And she looks up at Trader Joe, and she looks at me, and she tells Trader Joe, Oh, don't worry. He already got it for me. And I gave her a 
big ass hug first time I ever hugged her in so long because I didn't want her to know that I had the surgery. And I was like, Mama, you just called me he. And she said, you're confusing me. <laughs> it's still a strong journey, but we're moving on strong. Thank you so much. time for D-Lo. Yeah. Thank you for hanging in there. I know y'all are ready for a break. We're about to move on to our breakout sessions, and we were going to have people come up from each of those sessions and pitch why you should go to them. There was going to be opera. There was going to be comedy. But in the interest of time, we ain't doing that. So what we're going to do is we have volunteers that are going to be around the room with the signs for each session. So once you decide which session you want to go to, you can just follow a volunteer there. If you want to turn to the page in your program that says Future Conversations, I'm just going to read them out to you and let you know where you can find your volunteer in the space. So the first one is being moderated by Clyde Valentine, and it is called Activating Visibility and Cultivating Voice, Community Organizing and Engagement Through Cultural Practice in Dallas, Texas, my hometown. So if you want to see Clyde's, if you want to hear about what they're doing in Dallas, that's going to be in the green room. And you will meet this volunteer right there, and they will lead you to the green room. The next one is called Place Displace, LA, San Francisco, making room for artists and community and California's creative economy. That's gonna be in the Youth Artist Lounge, which is in the next building. And that volunteer is right there, and they can guide you there. Next, we have Redefining Language Through Identity, which will be moderated by none other than James Cass himself. That's gonna be in the screening room, which is also in the next building, and the volunteer for that is hiding right back over there. Okay, next we have Future Findings, Future Aesthetics in the Howard Lobby, going to be moderated by Jeff Chang out of Stanford. Yeah, holding it down. Then we have Changing Structure, Shifting Systems in the Big Room. If you want to get to the Big Room, follow that gentleman right there. And last but not least, we have Artists Changing the Course of the River, which will be right here in the theater. Those sessions will begin in 15 minutes, and those sessions must end at 445. So we have to be out of the building at 445. Go forth and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> 